Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we finish our Aimi Hamasaki music marathon with my review of a 17th full album, Made in Japan. Before we get started, I want to remind you that this is simply my opinion on the album. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more. Made in Japan is Ayumi's last original album that was released back in 2016, and it is also the final review I will make about her music as she hasn't released anything new yet. And before I get started, I just wanted to say that I hope that you enjoy this series of reviews. I know I took a much needed break from them for a few months, but I'm glad I managed to finish them this year. And even if her later discography isn't much of my cup of tea outside of a few albums, I still had a lot of fun going back to it. I felt ready to be open-minded and just listen to everything and get my opinion out there. And you know, I had fun listening to them, even though it was sometimes a bit more difficult. <laughs> and I hope my rambling wasn't uh, too much for you. And anyway, thank you for listening to me. I hope you had fun on these. And without further ado, here's what I think of Made in Japan. So this album is actually Ayumi's shortest to date, which is surprising considering how she got us used to very long albums and very few are as short as this one, which was a point I thought would be reassuring. And it also, when it was announced, Made in Japan, I was like, this is a very bold title. And for me, it felt like it was claiming that it would be a blend of J-pop and traditional Japanese music. But at the time when it came out in 2016, my interest in her music was very low. So I did listen to it, but I didn't properly listen to it until now. So this album and its title, Inside, does try to blend traditional Japanese music instruments and melodies to a more modern and typical sound, very common in her music. And it tries for like three songs until it gives up completely and does the same thing all over again, making this album as bland as it comes. I genuinely don't understand why this album was even made in the first place, outside of a contract stating so, because it is uninspired and boring. Nothing outside of two songs is interesting. And once again, it is the cover at the end of the album that takes the gold for me, which is worrying when it's a cover more interesting than your original work. Although I would say that Survivor which, by the way, was composed by Timothy Willard, who I think did a great job giving Ayumi something very different. And Summer Love that are standouts, and they feel interesting and new. But the thing is, if you compare them to the rest of the album, they do stand out, but not in a good way, because they feel too different, and they just don't fit with the rest of it. And honestly, I don't really know what she was going for with this album, but I don't get it. <laughs> And it really left me on the verge of skipping each song after a minute because sometimes my patience was just not there. And although I controlled myself and I was like, I'm gonna listen to all of them for this review. And you know, I noted that sometimes even Ayumi herself sounded very exhausted. <laughs> oh my god, it was, it was weird, you know, to listen to this and be like, I don't think she's as convinced as she should be on this one either, so that's why for me this album just doesn't work at all, and honestly, I thought Made in Japan would be an album with a message to deliver, as its title suggested, and it is, however, a very standard and not so appealing addition to her discography, and you know, coming right after A1, I feel like this is the same thing over and over again, that it's using a tired gimmick, and listen, I appreciate the fact that she released so many albums, that she really kept a work ethic that is outstanding, really. But I think, like, maybe sometimes taking a break isn't too bad. And, I mean, she's kind of doing it right now, and if she's releasing a new album in 2020, I do hope it brings something interesting on the table, because for the last three no, four years actually, it has not been great. And uh, honestly, this album is bland and I got nothing out of it outside of maybe a couple songs that are interesting, but even so, I just don't want to go back to it. And that is why I give it 
one star. Thank you for watching this review and as always you can tell me how you feel about this album in the comment section down below and I'll see you next time for more reviews.